A couple weeks ago, we did a tour of the inside of the camper and showed all the little mods and things we'd added to it to spruce it up and make it our own. And we got a lot of really good feedback about that. So today, we're gonna show you our five outside things that we've purchased to use with our camper that we really love. This is the good life. So what's the first one? Uh, the first one is x -Trox. They're by BAL. The kids call them the cheese graters because they kind of look like cheese graters. We still have the regular chocks, like the triangular chocks that you put under your wheels because those are quick and easy grab and throw them down to get yourself unhitched. The only reason I'm pulling this is because I know it's not going to move. Better put it back. <laughs> um, but we... We use those regular chocks for just initially getting set up. And then we use the X chocks. Now, some people just use X chocks, no triangular chocks. Why do we use these though? Well, I'm getting there. Right. Shush. Um, and frankly, we over chalk because we still keep our regular chocks down and use these, but we use these primarily for stabilization. We have the stabilizers on the trailer, but we have found that when you put these in on the wheels, it actually makes it shake even a little less. Um, so we use them primarily for stabilization of the wheels. A lot less. So that it's not so bouncy. We have big kids on a high bunk, so that moves the rig around a lot, so this helps quite a bit. Yeah. Comes with a wrench, a uh, little handy dandy wrench. The kids like to actually be the ones that tighten it down. They try. <laughs> they try at least. Um, comes with it, yeah, super easy. Here's the handy dandy X chocks. Slide them in here. They're $75 for a pair. Which is a lot, but like we said, we think it's worth it. And I guess it only works if you have a tandem axle. I didn't really think about that. Yeah, just you now. have to have two axles. To <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work if you have a single fits axle. Fits between the two tires. So, yeah. So, that's, that's one item one. Item number two on our list of five favorite things is a coupler lock. This big Mondo thing is from Proven Locks. This isn't an Amazon purchase. You have to go directly to the manufacturer's website. But this is to lock the trailer so no one can just drive up and put it on their hitch and drive away with it. Um, so we use it when the trailer's in storage and then we use it when we're at a campground and we're going away to go do something fun for the day. Um, Peace of mind. It's not cheap. It's about $250. But to us, that was worth it for that peace of mind. Um, it's the reason I like it so much is it kind of feels like a fun little puzzle every time I put it on. Um, and it, it's a quarter inch steel and you hook the chains up inside it so the chains get up and out of the way and enclosed within this. And then it's got this little hockey puck lock, aluminum lock thing on the outside. Um, it's super fun. And it also gives you a workout. I don't know, you can't tell this. It's heavy. It's, it's probably a good Oh, and you can dif so. get different colors to express your personality. And that one is from provenlocks.com. Okay, item three on our list of outdoor travel trailer accessories that I think are a super nice thing to have are the Camco vent covers that are on the roof. So we didn't get them at first. I didn't understand what they were for until we camped several times when it was cold out and we had a lot of propane going and there's a lot of humidity in the rig. And we realized it'd be really nice to keep those open all night. But the problem was... To keep them open to eliminate the humidity. Right, keep them open to eliminate the humidity. But the problem was is that uh, what if it rains and starts pouring and I don't want to get rained on when we're in there. So that's kind of what these are made for. So. You, you put them on top of the vent covers, they protect it from hail damage, um, obviously rain, and it still lets air flow in and out, so the hot air can get out, and they're super easy to install. Well, we haven't had any humidity issues since we had them. Yeah, they've, they've stayed on real good. You, you, you do a little bit of drilling, uh, but the drilling is right into the side of the, uh, the vent cover. You don't drill into your roof. So even me, who really can't 
do anything with the tool, was able to put them on with a little bit of time. Oh, you, you so can do more than you give yourself credit for. Um, so that is item number three. Oh, and the uh, the cost on those is also really low. Uh, it's about twenty to thirty dollars, depending on where you get it and the time. But um, yeah, they're just the cheap Camco vent covers. Item number three. And they come in black or white. And, and we have one of each. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't make them match, but we didn't. Because uh, I'm a cheapskate and the, <laughs> the, black, the black, to get them to match would have cost me an extra 20 bucks. So. <laughs> Item number four is bumper caps for the back bumper where a lot of people store their sewer hose. I kid you not, we drove our camper off the lot and two miles on the highway, we lost a bumper cover. Then we had to drive the camper back because we had to get a, something readjusted with the hitch. And on the way back, a couple weeks later, the other one came off. This is before we've even ever used the rig. The yeah. Top, yeah, we'd never even camped. It's brand new. So the ones that it comes with are crappy and they don't stay in. So if you have them now, just throw them away. Like, yeah, <laughs> just my, be my, prepared to lose them. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna fall on the ground and just be trash. You might as well throw them in the trash. Yeah, but... Um, so what we found that works is... You're so interrupty! So, I researched online and a lot of people really like the magnetic ones, which sounded cool to me. Um, but then I also read some reviews that the magnetic ones over time, that people lost them or whatever. And so I found these ones that are, um, they look similar to just the regular bumper covers, but they have little ridges so they're more friction fitted. But the key is they have this little wire and then a clip that you clip it to the bumper. So even if it worked itself loose at some point, it would then just dangle because it's hanging by this little metal wire and clip. It's tethered like a dog. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. You so, have a little puppy hanging from your trailer. So you, you have like no. secondary containment yeah. <laughs> or secondary, uh, you have- You, you have, have a backup. You have backup for if you lose your bumper cover, you won't lose your bumper cover, bumper cap. But you might lose your hose. Well, yeah, I guess you could lose your hose. Point is, we haven't, none of them have come off ever, so they seem to be real sturdy, and we've probably put 2,500 miles on the rig since we've gotten it with that, so. I think it'd be a lot harder to lose the hose out of there anyways, but. Um, They're eight bucks, Amazon, real cheap. Yeah. You need two of them, so I guess it's 16 bucks, but um, really worthwhile if you're gonna put your sewer hose in your um, rear bumper. Yeah, way better than the ones that come with it. So that was item number four. Yeah. We're down to item number Five. This, this is the final travel trailer accessory for outside. The one that you're so anal retentive about. <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, this one's a little expensive too. This is for electrical. This is the Surge Guard um, from Southwire. It's basically it's an EMS, so it's a it's a surge protector, but it's more than a surge protector. So this will plug into the electrical pedestal, and what it does besides protect you from surges is it also does like an all around electrical management. So like if you're getting low voltage at some campsites, I've heard you could um, get, if a lot of camps, you know, a lot of rigs are running their air conditionings at the same time, and then that actually damages your system. So this kind of protects against that. So it's and gonna- And it would cut it off, right, from your rig. If it wasn't getting enough power, it'll cut it off so that you're not overdrawing and causing damage. Yeah, it, it protects it from over, like too much power and not enough power. Yeah so that it, it knows it's getting the right thing. And it's the cool thing is, is it's, it gives you like a 10 second countdown once you first plug it in. Um, and then once it goes and it checks everything out, make sure everything's grounded right, you're good to go. And then you don't have to worry about it at all. I like it a lot. It's uh, the Surge Guard from How Southwire. How much is it? Oh, this, so this one comes from, I heard about this one from Techno RV, which has a really good YouTube channel um, and learned a lot from, but it's also not cheap. 250 bucks, um, but it's one of those things that could protect a thousand dollar appliance or more uh, mm -hmm. on the inside, so. And it's one of those things that we didn't even, when we first got in, got an RV and got into this, we didn't even know we needed that. And I see a lot of people on like the Facebook groups about RVs and camping saying like, oh, I just learned that I should have a surge protector. Or, oh, I wish <laughs> I had one because something bad happened. And I think this is one of those things like, worth again worth the 250 bucks not to damage your tens yeah. of thousands of dollar camper that's it that's our five favorite outdoor items that we purchased for our travel trailer this year that i would highly suggest someone gift them to you for christmas this year <laughs> gift them to you
today is Sunday and all the traffic's all backed up on that side of the road. Everyone going back to Denver. We're going up. We're camping at Lowry Campground and then tomorrow we're at Heaton Bay. Heaton Bay, yeah. And now we're in Eisenhower Tunnel. I guess I don't need my sunglasses. In the middle of a mountain with our trailer. Get the sunglasses ready. You're going to get blinded. Welcome to Summit County. Welcome to Sunnyside. Name that movie if you know that quote. And stop. There will be days when we're afraid to fly, and moments when we want to stop and cry. But we'll remember how we got this high right here, right now. So we've been using our fridge for, I don't know, three, four months now, and it's been fine. All of a sudden today we found out all our food is 10 degrees. It's like frozen in the fridge. My Cokes turned into slushies, which yeah. is kind of fun, but. It's not what we want though, because the cheese is frozen. We can't even make sandwiches with the cheese. So we Googled. Well, I noticed that this little thing was like hanging down here, this little guy. Okay, it looks like a little snake piece. Apparently that was had fallen down. Yeah, so normally, right, you have this, this thing goes on the fin, right? And you adjust it to adjust the temperature of the fridge. Well, apparently this clips into this fin and that's how the sensor works. So let's see how it goes. There's a thicker clip here and I'm- That's supposed to stay in there. That goes in there and then hooks onto here and now so we've been moving that up and down and it doesn't do anything because it's, it's just a thing. piece of plastic <laughs> on there oh now it's all thawing out too because it got so cold there's drips back there but yeah so probably put it in the middle yeah. we didn't we have a thermometer too so yeah that's how we knew it was like well it's up high right now, now. it's high because it's been open for a few minutes but it was down to like negative 10 it was like turning into a second freezer so I so, guess a pro tip is if you want a second freezer is you just let that thing dangle to the ground. So it just slides. There's like a little hole in the back corner and that can slide okay. right through it. Uh, we got watermelon slushy in here probably. Ooh, that sounds yummy. And put that in my wine. There's always something. Always something to troubleshoot in here. Which makes sense. How often does your regular house jiggle, jiggle, jiggle down a road for several hours at a time. Good point. I'm sure my regular house would have things to troubleshoot more often if it got dragged down a road. We're doing Frisbee golf. Where are we? One of the mountains. We're at, actually, it's the Frisco... Adventure Park. Frisco Adventure Park. And we all... We're gonna do some Frisbee golf. Golf? Is that how you get ready? Wow. <laughs> that was good. Uh, it would have gone in, but I was rushed. I 
I just finished this. It was my third one of the day. I think this is the biggest back in sight we have ever come across. Our trailer back there is 23, 24 feet. Okay, it's 22 feet. It's like backing down a street to fit in here. And they call it a pull-in because the electrical is on the wrong side. So they want you to pull in, but then how do you get your tow vehicle out? Yeah, your truck is just stuck if you drop your hitch and you pull in. So we did it the wrong way, but I like it and we're a little more secluded. So I would recommend this one. What is this? 43, a Heaton Bay Sea Loop. We've been pretty delinquent on our stickers. Part of that's because a couple of places we couldn't find stickers. So we went online and found some and ordered them. But we got a few. We got Rocky Mountains of Colorado. We figure we live in the Rockies. We're not gonna get one every single place we camp up here because we'll camp up here a lot. So we just got a Rocky Mountains one. Then we got one from our Lake McConaughey trip. And then we got one for Red Feather Lakes. We camped there over 4th of July on a friend's property. Okay, now we're current. We're displaying every place that Sandy the Rig has been so far in the sh few short months we've owned her. Some people ask about this sticker. That's for Flatirons Community Church. It's where we go to church, that's where Chadwick works. And we put it on here because we practiced how to park the rig in the parking lot at the church. So we figured it counted. We got Estes Park, parking at Flatirons, Cherry Creek State Park, Rocky Mountains, lots of different places. Badlands, Black Hills, South Dakota, River Run RV Resort, Lake McConaughey, Nebraska, and Red Feather Lakes, Colorado. Where to next? everywhere we're also delinquent on our stickers inside but this is not my fault and it's not the kid's fault it's dad's fault because these used to live in the camper and he decided to take the stickers out and leave them at home when we went on our big trip and got to go in all these other states so oh, come on we weren't using them at all well we were about to anyways oops we didn't put our stickers on from when we went through south dakota and nebraska and stuff and we're changing a rule. On one of our early videos, we said we could only put it on there if we camped at least one night in a state. We decided that it's too restrictive. We don't like rules. So if the camper drove through the state, it gets a sticker. <laughs> so what states do we get to do, guys? All we these three. Why? What are these they? Three. Wyoming, Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota. On there, it's S DAC. Say what? S DAC. <laughs> Yeah, do we get to put up a stack on it? Right, are you gonna put them up, Braxton? Uh, yeah. That one looks cool. Sweet! Man, that wasn't perfect, but a so stack. A stack. A <laughs> stack. So stack or a stack. Okay, now that. Okay. Get it on there good, please. There you go. Now rub it with your finger so it sticks good. So it's like a license plate? Yeah. So that was Lake McConaughey. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I want to fill up that entire thing by the end of the year. Where should we go next? Which one? Should I go eeny, meeny, miny, mo? Texas. Oh, we already went there. Texas. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Texas. <laughs> so the next place we're going to um, out of Colorado is Utah during fall break. And we're going to Moab and camping there. So I just want to say thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. It will help our channel a lot. Um, or as Harrison would say, like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, definitely comment. We want to get to know who you are. And if you have any questions, we'd love to try to help out because we've learned from a lot of other people. So that's kind of why we're doing this is to be able to help others and pay it forward. You can even, even tell us what you want to see and we'll try to make that happen. Yeah. Maybe it'll give me an excuse to buy something new. Oh, Lord. No, right. don't do that. Forget that. Ex nay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, no. We don't have to. We don't have to look too far. Home is always close. It's always in our hearts. No matter where we go, no matter where we are, we don't have to.
have to look too far.